An Edmonton man has been found guilty of manslaughter and the death of a Lloydminster man. Now this comes even though the Crown says he likely wasn't the one who fatally stabbed the victim. Cliff DeCoin Zuniga was part of a group that swarmed Dylan McGillis on White Ave in 2006. Now DeCoin Zuniga testified he punched and kicked McGillis. The Crown prosecutor says just being part of the group involved in the attack is enough for a conviction. Now DeCoin Zuniga has been released on bail and a sentencing date will be set for next Thursday. The 24-year-old Lloydminster man accused of allegedly luring underage victims online is out on is out of custody rather. Chad Blair Clark was in court in North Battleford this morning. Now he's been released on a $2,000 cash bail and must abide by numerous conditions. He'll be back in court in Lloydminster on November 4th. Clark has been charged with numerous offenses including four counts of luring, one count of unlawful confinement and two counts of sexual assault. North Balford RCMP are investigating an armed robbery at a hotel. Now it happened yesterday night just before 830 on Railway Avenue East. Police say a male entered the lobby of the hotel with a firearm and demanded cash from staff members. He ran away with an undisclosed amount of money. Now he's described as over six feet tall and was wearing a white hoodie with dark markings on the back and blue jeans. He was covering his face at the time of the robbery with a white shirt possibly. Now the investigation is ongoing. Anyone with information should call North with Balford RCMP at 306-446-1720 or Crime Stoppers. And meanwhile, a 14-year-old has been charged with numerous offenses after a break and enter at a North Battleford school, school. RCMP say it happened early Thursday morning near 22nd Avenue and 102nd Street. A vehicle was also reported stolen from the school parking lot. The youth has been charged with break and enter, possession of stolen property, and three counts of failing to comply with the conditions of an undertaking. Police say charges against other suspects are pending. Well, it's been seven years in the making and many residents have waited for this moment to set up a senior housing facility in the village of Edam. Today, the community gathered for the groundbreaking of the new housing facility named the Edam Enriched Manor. Anna Stiles, I was there this morning and has more. Somebody put a foot on it. Frank, put a foot on it. There we go. Perfect. Perfect. Great. The EDAM Enriched Manor will be built right beside the Lady Minto Health Care Center, which is run by Prairie North Health Region. But the future housing seniors facility will be fully independent and privately funded. Evelyn Cooper, member of the EDAM Enrichment Board, says they noticed there was a high need and demand for housing for seniors. Our seniors were looking to have to leave the community and, and they didn't want to have to do that because they had lived with their neighbours all of their lives and to actually have to move to the city for their final years was not something that they were looking forward to. Something that we've been waiting for and we must have other communities. Uh, no matter where you're from, you need these types of communities, these buildings going up. The mayor of Edam says many of the seniors didn't qualify for level three to four, which is the highest level of care the Lady Minto Healthcare provides. He adds it's been a frustrating experience to get the project going, but is happy with the results. We recognize that the government, either government, federal or provincial, can't go around to every little community in Saskatchewan and build a, an assisted living home, and it's, that's that's not not possible. But the fact is that they're starting to recognize that there is a need. The board proposed this project to the government years ago, but they say funding wasn't available at that time. The funding for the general operations will come from 11 private backers until the building is fully functional. We hope that people will support uh, as much as they can and uh, you know there's going to be a financial need. Um, can't all be done with rents so uh, we'll be looking for donations. The core people that were involved with the project um, just had the firm belief if we build it, they will come. They will fill it. The project costs a total of $3.5 million. Construction is set to start next week and should be completed in the next 10 months. Anna Stanislaw, UCAP News.